Hi, Lewis Kemper here, sitting in my adventure van wanderer. I'm working on my video on the Dempster Highway portion of this trip. Doing the Dempster Highway was a goal that I had set before I left home in California. And to me, it was really kind of an exciting, important part of the trip. I really wanted to drive to the Arctic Ocean because I figured I'd never, ever have that chance again in my lifetime. So while I was driving to Alaska, I learned about the Dempster Highway and thought, what the hell, I'm going to make that side trip. And it was really cool, and I'm really, really glad I did it. But I'm having lots of thoughts about that. Actually, right now, I'm in Alaska, sitting along the Denali Highway. It's kind of an overcast day, so I thought I'd work on my video a little bit. It was a really wonderful sunrise, and you'll find out about that in another video coming up. But I'm thinking back on the Dempster and working on that video, and I have a couple thoughts about it. Uh, number one, it w was a great adventure, and I'm really, really glad that I did it. But when I look back at it, I kind of have a few second thoughts. Mostly my second thoughts have to do with over-planning and watching so many videos on people going up the Dempster Highway that when I did it, it was sort of anticlimactic because I sort of knew what to expect on each and every portion of the journey. And that kind of took away some of the fun and the spontaneity of doing something new and seeing something that you've never experienced before. So I kind of learned that I think in the future, I'm not going to over plan too much and I'm not going to study the areas I'm going to quite as much as I did the Dempster Highway. I want it to be more spontaneous and more exciting. It was great, and, you know, seeing everything was new and was different, but every village I got to, every town I got to, I knew what it was going to look like, and I knew what the situation was going to be like in those areas. So that kind of took a little bit of the fun away from it for me. So I think in these days when we're so used to, you know, researching everything on the Internet, we should be a little bit cautious and think back and, you know, realize that, if you plan a little bit too hard and you study too much of what's going to happen, it's going to take away some of that spontaneity and some of that excitement and joy of your exploration. So explore more and plan less. That's my theory going out now in the future on my adventures. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Dempster Highway, I'm going to share that with you on a map and explain what we did and where we drove from and what the experience was like. And I'm going to try to keep this video down to something tolerable. We drove over 1,400 miles of dirt road in about, let's see, we did in five nights. And it's pretty hard to condense all of that down into just a 20-minute video. So I'm afraid this one might go a little bit long, but it's going to give you the experience of the Dempster. And if you're planning on doing this trip on your own, don't watch all of it. It's going to ruin your experience, I think. But if you're not going on the Dempster and you really want to live uh, vicariously through my adventures, then watch the whole video and enjoy. Hi everybody. This is a map showing the Dempster Highway. The Dempster Highway runs north off of Highway 2. Goes up this direction through the Yukon into the Northwest Territories up past Inuvik up here and all the way up to the Arctic Ocean at Tuktiuktuk, -tuk, otherwise known as Tuk. So our route took us, start down here, we stocked up in Dawson City, got gas and water. We drove up the first day to about here somewhere. Um, we spent the night at a quarry just north of Engineer Creek Campground. Hi, today's an exciting day getting ready to start the Dempster Highway, going up past the Arctic Circle and all the way to the Arctic Ocean, as far north as you can drive in Canada. So I'm really excited about that, leaving Dawson City here right now and heading up to the Dempster Highway. So it's not every day you say you get to drive to the Arctic Ocean, but we're gonna start today. And the official start of the Dempster Highway. I'm really looking forward to this. Here we are going up the 
Dempster. I just got passed by my first car. I wonder how long it'll be before I get a crack on my windshield. First pit stop on the Dempster. We've only gone in maybe half an hour or so, but it's lunchtime. So we're stopped in a little quarry kind of turnout and we're gonna eat some lunch. So far, it's not too bad. The road's pretty good. Did adjust the shocks and put them into the number one setting to make the ride a little bit smoother. And that seems to be helping. So that's a good thing. What could be better, being on the Dempster Highway and eating a coffee crisp. Welcome to Canada. Well, it's been a month that I've been on the road. It doesn't quite seem that long to me, because every day is a new adventure. I wonder what it'll be like in another month. This is one part of the adventure that I've really been looking forward to getting to drive through the Arctic Ocean. I figure this is a once in a lifetime chance. We have to make a toaster of an adjustment to get to the floor so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. If you want to go ahead, you certainly can. Alright, I'll go up for a little ways. Pothole slum. <clears throat> Moving from side to side across the road, trying to avoid the big potholes. Pulling way over when another vehicle comes. Trying to avoid the chipped windshield. I doubt I'll make it the whole way up and back without a chipped windshield, but I'm going to see it, how far I can go. So here the river is flowing red, it must be full of iron. All the rocks are coated with it, but if you break one of the rocks open, they're not red on the inside. So the iron is in the water. Pretty wild, it's been like that for at least a mile, maybe more.
So then we crossed the Continental Divide, went to Eagle Plains, we crossed the Arctic Circle, we came up to the border of the Yukon and Northwest Territories, we took a ferry across the Peel River at Fort McPherson, and we spent the night somewhere right in here. We're letting this guy in front of us get way ahead of us because it's really picking up on the dust here. Yeah, the guy in front of me is doing that too. So we made it to Eagle Plains. And this is pretty much all of Eagle Plains. The hotel, I guess that's part of the hotel up there. And there's a little automotive repair station up here and gas station and then maintenance equipment. And that's about it. So we're gonna go in, say hello, hopefully use a restroom and head on up. We're about to cross the Eagle River, which eventually flows into the Yukon River. Here we are at the Arctic Circle. It's 80 degrees out. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. here and we're heading actually they don't even have a tuck on here we're going past here you see I'm pretty sure we go through here up to there so here's a definition of the Arctic Circle Here's the scenery. And so far, the bugs aren't too bad, but I can't say it out loud. Well, so far today, we've crossed the Arctic Circle, and now we're entering the Northwest Territories. Pretty exciting day. Well, coming to the border of the Yukon and the Northwest Territory. Officially in the Northwest Territories. Well, actually, once I cross that sign. Pretty cool. I've been in the Northwest Territories once before when I went to Somerset Island, but this is the first time I ever drove. And if you look over here, 
You can read this sign. The Arctic Ocean is 415 kilometers away. And we're going to the town of Tuktyaktuk, 421 kilometers away. So pretty cool. The skies, puffy clouds, beautiful weather. But as I rotate here towards the east, you can see the big clouds. We just heard thunder. So kind of stormy in that direction. So, so far, it seems like the roads here in the Northwest Territories are a little smoother than they were in the Yukon. I don't know if that's just because this section of the road is a little different or if it's different governments but I'm enjoying this part so far. This feels like we're on a highway. Well, it's a giant open expanse here, that's for sure. I can see the road just disappearing off in the horizon. That's as far as I can see. I really feel like I'm on top of the world here. Approaching the Peel River Ferry in Fort McPherson. It's just a kilometer or so ahead. So they have free ferries to take you across the two rivers en route. The first river is the Peel River. So it looks like they can only take a couple of vehicles at a time, so that's probably why they had to go. So I just have to wait for the ferry to come back before I catch my ride. I'm not sure if you get out of the ferry here or if you have to sit in your cars. I guess I'll find out. You can see it doesn't take very long to get across the Kill River. It's a short crossing. And if I'm not mistaken, this ferry is on a cable. It gets pulled back and forth. off. But here we are, we're going across the Peel River. I can see the cable. So this is my third ferry trip. I took a ferry coming and going from Horseshoe Bay to uh, the Sunshine Coast to Gibson's when I was visiting Barrie. So I'll take this one across, we'll take one more across the Mackenzie River, and then the same two on the way back. So this is going to be our campsite for the night.
Now you can see all the flies buzzing around the front. The horse flies here are pretty huge. They're about the size of a small bird. And there's a gazillion of them. Now I haven't been bit by one yet, but when I go out, they like are bombarding the car and everything. You have to be really careful opening the doors because then they get in the car. So that's a problem. I don't see any mosquitoes out here, but just tons and tons of these flies. So I'm standing here inside Wanderer. We're north of the Arctic Circle. We're north of Fort McPherson. It's in the 80s outside. The horse flies outside are about this big and they're all around every window. So I'm not really going out and venturing outside for too long or at all, if probably. Got my fan turned on high. I've got all the windows open that I can open in the van. And it's hot. I'm in the Arctic and it's freaking hot. I'm tempted to turn on the air conditioner. This is crazy. Then the next day, we took a ferry across the Mackenzie River. We drove up to Inuvik, which is the largest town along the route. And there we stocked up on supplies. We got gas and we got water and groceries. It was 87 degrees when we were in Inuvik. We tried to go into the, uh, take a tour of the Igloo Church, but it was closed that day. So we planned to do that on the way back. And then we drove the last stretch, 125 kilometers, up to Tuktoyuktuk, -tuk, otherwise known as Tuk. And that's where we spent the night at the edge of the Arctic Ocean. So I'm coming up to the next ferry crossing. This is the Mackenzie River. Oh, it looks like the ferry's coming back towards me. So I won't have to wait very long. That's cool. This is a little bit longer of a crossing. It's not by cable, the ferry is actually powered. Steering around the mud bar from what I understand. You can't go straight across. So this is the Mackenzie River that we're crossing here. He was reading my license plate. Smooth landing. I'm kind of hanging back a little bit too. Let this vehicle get ahead so the dust isn't so bad. You can see the cliffs of the Mackenzie River in front.
away we go. Let's see how far it is to Anubek. Hundred twenty six kilometers. So about seventy miles or so. All right, we've left Inuvik and are heading up to Tuck. The last seventy seven miles or a hundred and forty three kilometers. So we hit the Arctic Ocean. The stretch of the road is supposed to be a little rough, so we'll see how that goes. It should take about two and a half hours to get up there. So hopefully it'll be less smoky up there and maybe not quite as hot. Uh, actually, the sky looks kind of dark up ahead, which I think really is mostly smoke. So we'll see what happens. center one kilometer. Welcome to Tuck Tuck. Tuck. That's the Arctic Ocean right in front of me. Now I just have to level out the van. So here I go, walking up to the Arctic Ocean. Now let's see, I'm going to take off my shoes so I don't get them all wet. Dipped my 
my feet in the Arctic Ocean and it's a little chilly but not too bad. I can still feel my toes but that's going away quickly. <laughs> See, I'd like to reverse this camera, but it's not giving me the option here, so I'm going to stop the video, reverse the camera, and I'm still standing in the Arctic Ocean, but I'm starting to lose the feeling in my toes right now. So, there we go, and I think that's probably enough it out while I still can. But that was my first ever dip in the Arctic Ocean, even though I just dipped my toes. It's a start. Pretty nice. Welcome to Tuck. So here I am at the Arctic Ocean. Drove all the way up the Dempster Highway. Took three days from Dawson City to get up here. Spent last night camping right here on the Arctic Ocean. It's really windy here. Yesterday was kind of warm. Today's a lot cooler. We've had high temperatures. It was 87 in Inuvik above the Arctic Circle yesterday. So it's been pretty crazy up here. And yesterday I stood in and uh, dipped my toes into the Arctic Ocean. It was a little bit cold. I was hoping to maybe take a better dip today, but it's so windy and so nasty. We've got white caps on the ocean. And I'll turn this way. And we'll actually walk down. When we do this, might get a little bad with the sound quality because the wind's blowing in my face. I'm going to stand shelter of the van for a little bit. And to show you. This is the Arctic Ocean. So you can see the white caps. Yesterday the wind was blowing the other direction. Today we have an onshore breeze. Pretty rough out there. But this is as far north as you can drive in North America. And the van's doing pretty good. Not too dirty. We drove 700 miles on the dirt road from, Dem from Dawson City. And now we have to turn around and do it again. So greetings from the Arctic Ocean. We drove back, we went to Inuvik and took a tour of the Igloo um, church there and went just a little bit past there and spent the night. Um, again, I think it was an old quarry site. Then we went down, crossed the rivers again, and we drove all the way down to the second continental divide crossing and we spent the night right on top of the continental divide. And then we drove out from there all the way back to Dawson City. And that was our route on the Dempster Highway. 
Well, I've just completed the Dempster Highway all the way from Dawson City up to Tuktoyaktuk on the Arctic Ocean. I had four goals in mind before I left on this trip that I wanted to accomplish on the Dempster Highway. Goal number one was to get to the Arctic Ocean and dip my toes in. Mission accomplished. Goal number two was to make it up without any flat tires. Mission accomplished. Goal number three was to make it up there without chipping my windshield. Amazingly enough, mission accomplished. And the fourth goal was to come back with my headlights intact. Mission accomplished. So all in all, it was a very successful trip up the Dempster Highway. So here we are, the aftermath of the Dempster Highway. I'm on the floor of the van, cleaning everything I can, every surface I can. I had to go out and buy microfiber cloths and sponges and all kinds of stuff. But while we have a fresh water supply, I'm here and I'm wiping down every surface I can find in the van and you can see just how dirty everything is and everything is covered in this layer of dirt and dust. And that concludes my journey. If you like this video, please use the button below and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy this view from the Arctic Circle. In the next video, I'll be greeting you from Alaska. This is Lewis Kemper saying thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.